Howdy folks, it's Meandering Mike in the Man Cave of Madness. It's the middle of the day and we're doing an unboxing here of GMT's Inferno. Guelphs and Gimelines Vi for Tuscany, 1259-1261. through 1261. This is a game design by Enrico Acerbe and Volko Hrunke. It's the third volume in the Levy and Campaign series. Volko Runka is the originator of the series, um, and he is co-designer on this title. Enrico Acerbe is a, uh, it's a historical expert on uh, medieval Italian warfare. So uh, I actually did this unboxing yesterday. Uh, this is Out of the Shrink. Uh, but my camera decided to totally flake out and I lost 90% of the video, <laughs> a nice corrupt file that was magically exactly one gigabyte in size. So something weird went on, but, uh, so we're doing this thing again. All right. So let me flip to the back since the shrink's already off and we'll take a peek at, uh, the back here. I'm going to zoom in and point to certain features. Uh, for example, here, it's for one to two players. So the solitaire suitability is mm, on the high side, but not the highest. Uh, average complexity, three to four hours. One to two players. All right, so we do have a mounted map in this. It's not a large one. It's a 17 by 22. We have wooden pieces, playing cards, counter sheets, three of them. 15 Lord and Battle Mats. So there's the square tiles that we'll see that are there. Uh, sticker sheet. Yeah, uh, there are blocks that need stickering, but it's not a lot. There's only, what, 14 Lords and a Battle Mat? So 14 Lords, yeah. Uh, there's four player aid sheets, two screens. Not sure if those screens are for while you're moving or while you're setting up. Um, rules book, background booklet, which is, uh, history, designer notes, um, and examples of play. Six, six out of dice. All right. So, uh, a little quick background. This is set in Tuscany. They're on the Italian boot. Um, the Guelphs and the Ghibellines are fighting each other. The, the Ghibellines are headquartered at Siena. The Guelphs at uh, Furzine. Uh, they get the <laughs> German knights in Sicily involved. Um, other Italian city states, Arezzo, Luca, Bologna, and Naravietta join in. So it's a big old battle going on, or well, I should say uh, a campaign. Uh, a lot of folks fighting. So again, this is the Levy and Campaign series, so it's an operational, medieval operational level warfare. Third in the series of Levy and Campaign. The first being Nevsky, and the second being Almoravid. All right, so let's open up this box. It is a big three-inch box. Standard heavy-duty GMT. There it goes. Let's put that back there so you can see that. Well, let's take a quick look at the artwork itself. Whoa. <laughs> All right, fumble fingers. Zoom out a bit so you can see the bigger picture of it. So obviously we have a bunch of troops. They're sieging, there's siege towers, and they're assaulting some walled town. There looks here to be uh, draft oxen with carts, so that would be, you know, the supplies that you need to carry into combat, etc. So it's an important part of your campaigning is to properly level your troops and your supplies. All right, so push that back. Go back to here. And let's start to look at the goodies. So I can feel it's a nice glossy. You can see the shine on it there, rule book. Um... Goes up to page 31. It's actually a 32-page rule book, as we can see here. 32. 
Uh, so on the last page and the interior page, they call it a key terms index. This is kind of like a glossary and index combined into one. So they have a key term and a very short description of what it is. So it's not like a full glossary, but uh, a, a sort of an annotated key terms with indexing, which is very useful. All right, now let's go back to the beginning and look at that table of contents. Introductory material, course of play, the components. Let's see. Uh, should I zoom in for you there a little better? As we, yeah, look at those. Uh, discussion of the game board and the map. Revolt and treasury, lords and vassals, forces, assets, other markers, cards. Uh, the setup and the calendar. Discussion of levy. And discussion of campaign, right? So, arts of war, pay, disbanding, muster, and call to arms. So those are all aspects of levying troops and or supplies. Campaigning is the waging now of your warfare based on what you've levied. You plan, you command, march, battle, siege, storm, and sally, supply, other commands. Feed, pay, and disband, and ending the campaign. Obviously... <laughs> You end up running out of food and our pay, <laughs> your campaign will soon come to an end. Not in a victory, right? If you if you mismanage, you're gonna have to back off and regroup or maybe just outright lose. All right, and there are scenarios, I believe. Let's go to page 26 there real quick. All right, the scenarios. A, they're sort of lettered through F. All right, so that's six. Six scenarios uh, ranging from 1259 to 1261. The first one's just 1259. Two-year scenarios, partial year scenarios. All right. And each one is telling you who's involved, this is the calendar. What what time period? Where does it start? How long does it go for? Who's involved? What your starting resources are? Which lords, etc. All right. All right. I'm not gonna flip through the entire rule book, as you can see. There's lots of color graphics showing the units, how you'd set up and manage your table, where. The items would be um, discussion of the cards, uh, what's on which card deck, where, the kind of components that you've got, etc. So set that aside. Bring up the background book, as they call it. Well, quick start on strategy, solitaire play, explanation of play. So here should be more detailed examples, how it all works out. Again, similar topics to the main rule book, but here you'll sort of see it in action. Muster and disband, called arms, march, supply, forge, and ravage, siege and storm, knight's quarter and ransom, treachery, revolt, and bribes. Uh, a battle mini game. So I wonder, let's take a quick look at that. That might be just, okay, here's how you set up the resolution of a combat. Let's do one. Let's, let's you know, battle out on a board. 19, not page 29. I hope so I go to the right page. All right. Battle mini game. Recreating Montaperti. So, evidently this was a famous, important battle. So they tell you how to... Set it up, which lords, vassals, what uh, capabilities they have. Um, and then it explains how to go ahead and fight out that battle. So obviously, in a levy and campaign full scenario, you are uh, 
stringing together multiple battles as you levy and maneuver and conduct your operations. That sounds like a great place to get started here, how to just fight a battle. All right, then there's various campaign histories. So this is telling us historically what went on, who was involved, lots and lots of background. This booklet here is 64 pages. That is uh, <laughs> nice. Now, if we let's look here at first, you might think, oh, that looks like an example of play. This is actually showing you on the map with pieces what what happened historically, where where they were, where they maneuvered. You know, not every little bitty detail, but this is the overall gist of what went on historically. There are those that are labeled certain you know, A, B, C, D, and then you can read uh, further information on what went on, and they'll reference those points. So this sounds like an awesome learning tool. <laughs> um, and in turn, the learning, learning this history and looking at what happened historically can help you gauge your gameplay. I mean, obviously, you're not necessarily going to make the same mistakes <laughs> that hist folks historically made, or at least you'll try not to. You'll try to do better, but you get to make your own mistakes. So, uh, Quite informative, help you learn the history and help you play your game. So again, this was a 64 page booklet. Much detail. Looks very interesting. All right. Now let's get on to the more components. I'm not sure if these are all in the right order. Again, since this is the second time I'm doing this, I probably did not necessarily put everything back in the box the exact same way, but that's okay. So if you buy this and you open yours, you may be encountering the components in a different order. So there are three counter sheets. So you can see these have nice rounded corners. Uh, however, there are some smaller, very old school, tinier counters. These happen to be, you know, like victory point count markers. Like these are worth one victory. These are halves, um, feed, ruins, can't read that from here. Oh, bypass. I mean, like, you can bypass the castle. Um, I'm zoomed in. That's why. Okay. I was uh, sort of mispointing. I'm like, hey, why isn't the camera showing what I'm... Yeah, I was zoomed in. All right. So, obviously, if you want to read these, bypass. Get a ravaged half victory. All right. So, some of these... There's not a lot of detail in those little tiny counters, like not having to read combat factors or something like that. Round counters, rectangular counters with rounded edges still. All right, so these, I believe, are the, the lords with their combat values, and there's some special dice notation on some of those. All right, I'm not sure if that's um, combat-related or command and control-related, activation-related. Um... Plus on the walls, moved, fought, a siege, all right. Coins, loot. Carts again, yeah, carts, where's your supplies? Provisions, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta have enough men and you gotta be able to feed them and pay them. Ships, all right, so that's the three counter sheets. Those are nice, good quality. Uh, uh, uh. These are screens, as they call them. Uh, there's no information on them. These are like, you know, not for for reference. Uh, there's different, there's not two identical screens. They're different. What are they different in? The artwork. You know, these have a different set of coat of arms than these. On the other side, it's the same information here, but the artwork's different. Three men at arms and a and a knight. And over here we have three knights. <laughs> All right, so it's, I, I believe these are put up when you're um, setting up or you're doing certain uh, 
activities or allocations, but it's obviously not up there all the time. But you can keep certain things, you know, behind the screen. Maybe like your, your current stockpiles of loot or overall, you know, wealth, etc. All right. In the box, there are more goodies. All right. So there are two. Remember, this is for one to two players. So there are two identical. Because if I <laughs> sequence of play commands on the inside, it has strongholds, battle and storm forces. All right, so reference material commands, sequence of play, various other. Actions, etc. Now there's two more cards. There's only single ones of these. Like this has the data on the Guelph lords and vassals. On the other side, there's the Ghibellines. Now that's a little hard to read at the top. It's just kind of a, a gradation, a gradient in the the coloring. It's actually a little easier to read on the camera than directly in the card, at least in this light. But I would have thought maybe they would have had two of these, one for each player, so each player can look at their own and the other guy's values and having to share that card. Then this one is Revolt and Treachery. And Revolt against the Guelphs, Revolt against the Ghibellines. You know, maybe Revolts don't happen all that often. You don't need a card for each player, but, you know... I think this would have been nice <laughs> to have two of these. That, that's just my, my thought, my thought. All right, now we come to the map, mounted map board. Now, I'm going to skip over this. I'm going to look at the other components in the box before I spread everything out and take a look at the map. So let me move these aside. and Let's show you the goodies. Here, all right. Dice, six of them. Three for each player. These are the, what they call Lord Mats. Uh, I would call that a, a tile. I mean, it's not a tile in the sense of like a tile laying game, but it's, you know, it's a cardboard. When someone says play mat, I either think, you know, the the uh, the neoprene mat or maybe just a card sheet that you're laying, like, you know, your, your, your setup of units, your order of battle or something like that. But uh, this does have spots to show the assets and the vassals, uh, information about the Lord. So it's, it's where they're from. And sort of what their their title or position off is. So Podesta for Siena, there's also a commune, commune, I'm not sure. Uh, in Italian, if you pronounce that last E in the vowel or not. Provenzano, Silvani, Capitanius. All right. Walter von Astenberg. This must be one of the German knight dudes that came up from Sicily. Aldo Bradino, Aldo Brash, Brandeschi, Count of Santa Fiora. I will not go through all these, but Count Giordano, Giagliano. There's another case of a Podesta. Captanius Pro Ecclesiae, uh, Captain of the, the Church, uh, some kind of a church guardsman, something. Podesta, a Captianus, a Podesta, Podesta, a Podesta, and a Commune. So, I don't know what Podesta <laughs> or Commune means. Obvious Captianus is captain. Uh, count, have you heard of counts before? Counts, Viscounts, etc. All right, so... 
that might have an explanation somewhere there in the rules and all those details I'm sure there are. Now, there's also, besides those Lord mats, this is the battle board I was talking about. So the attacker on this side, defender on that side, if you flip it upside down, you can actually read. Garrison or fort, center, the left, the right. All right, battle board. Wooden bits, lots of wooden bits. Now, there's browns, there's oranges, there's grays, there's tans, there's greens. Uh, no, if each of those different colors represent a different kind of resource or item or where it's from. Is, there, is that purple or is that brown? Oh, I'm not sure. Right. Bits, 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 bits. Now, so some of those, here are the stickers. three, four, six, seven. All right, so there's 28 of them. Um, they look identical. So you're probably putting them on both sides of the round discs. And so there are, yes, 14, because there's 15 total of these Lord and Battle Mat mats. <laughs> And they called them mats. He said, there's 15 of these. Well, there's one of this, so there must be 14 lords. So there's seven aside. That's why there's 28, because they're, they're identical. That one, that one, et cetera. Okay. So that, that's not too much to stick there. That's not too bad. Now, cards. We've got four card decks here. There are... Two for each side, and they're two different kinds. So there's command decks. All right. So these are the... Now, there's there's 26 of these in uh, each. I think I figured that out from... Let's see. That was one of the things on the back of the background book. Here was the art... Arts of War list. So this lists all 26 cards of each of the two sides in the Arts of War. Now, I don't know if the command deck had a similar thing or not, but by doing simple math, there's 26 of these, 52, and there's a Hmm, did it say 108 cards or 100 and 108? So there are actually extra cards. Interesting. So there's 56 cards in the command deck. And I'm going to guess because there's seven lords on each side. I'm guessing there's four cards per lord. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? I'm not gonna open these now. <laughs> um, we're already at 23 minutes, so we're about to try to wrap this up, but that's my guess. That's whether it be four times seven, 28, doubled 56, 50 cards here, 26 each, all right. So, standard insert. Some people get rid of this, put a tray. Uh, I blah, blah, blah. Could maybe fit a small tray in there. No baggies were included. Now, this is one of the things people have been talking about lately. Is there a baggie shortage? None were included. None were included. Unless I dropped them and lost them yesterday when I did my initial unboxing. But I don't see them. I don't think so. I don't remember them. So... No baggies. Hmm. So, that's the contents, folks, of Inferno, Guelphs and Ghibellines, the third volume in the Levy and Campaign series. This particular design was by Enrico Acerbe and Volko Runka. If you're into medieval operational campaigns, campaigns this is 
this series for you. And if you're into Italian medieval history, especially, this is definitely the game for you. Uh, it's very pretty, very interesting. One thing we have not looked at yet is the map. So let's get that done. So let me throw it in the box. Trust me, I will pack my game away in a much neater fashion, but I don't want to waste your time. So let's get to the map. Bonk. That's me. Bonk. All right. Knock that over on purpose. So here we see up here across the top. That is the calendar. That is the turns. Okay, I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to zoom in. I'm trying. Go, baby. All right, come on. It states which uh, season it is and the months. So in summer, June, July, August, September, in the autumn, October, November, winter, December, January, spring. So they've they're saying that there's. <laughs> Two, uh, summer's longer, spring's longer, but uh, winter and autumn are considered shorter periods. Now, do note that there's this statement of cards. So I believe during certain periods, you you get to go through more command cards, more, more cards to use. So winter is two months, but there's only four cards applied. Spring, you get seven cards in each. Um, summer, probably because it's hot, you get a little less. You get seven cards in the autumn, seven cards in the spring, and four in the winter, but you get six in the summer. So that is the calendar. All right, let's look at the, I'm gonna zoom back out a bit. All right, the major cities, there is Siena, there's Friends up there. Pisa is over here, Arezzo is there. So that's the biggest guys, Luca, Luca or Lucha, the double C, Luca, Lu, Luci, Luca, I'm not sure, I do not know Italian, I can make a good stab at it, but uh, now, these are roads, these kind of darker charcoal gray, now if you look really carefully here at this board, road, road, road and it forks it's all running up the boot they're sort of parallel to each other there's no major roads crossing over this way these are tracks so you can transfer you know but the road the way the roads are running that's very fascinating now there is a river here there's a lot of ports there's two ports out here there's one way down here one here, but there's a bunch of ports along the river. So that's an interesting aspect there. So that'll be interesting to see how that impacts the, the flow of who attacks where, what, how the, the action's going to be channeled or not. All right, now there is, as you saw, road and tracks, port symbols, uh, there's outposts, uh, leading cities? Does that say leading? I believe so. Towns and cities. So here's big, big towns, like we mentioned, or cities, towns. So Montalena, it's a town, city, Pisa city, friends, city, etc. These are just castles, these little guys here. 
So it looks universally like they have a value of one for a castle, two for towns, three for cities. Some of the cities are colored. Um, value, size, uh, Guelph and Ghibelline. So the purple are loyal to the Guelphs and the orange is to the Ghibellines. So purple, Ghibellines, Guelphs, Guelphs. So there's a mix. Okay, so they're there. They're there. All right. Uh, anything else interesting here? Podesta main seat, seat, seats. Uh, I'm assuming that's like uh, the count, uh, like capitals of regions, or or this lord's main holding. Um, Podesta I need to look that up. Is that like a some some you know some kind of a lower 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 level in the the feudal lordship hierarchy um but specifically what it translates to i do not know well obviously capitanius is a captain um box to hold captured ghibelline knights uh captured guelph knights all right so that's the Nice mounted map board for Inferno, folks. All right, so that is me unboxing for Inferno. Gulfs and Ghibellines from GMT. Again, it was Enrico Acerbe and Volcoronca, as we can see here. So if you're interested in that game, I can't remember. It just, just, just shipped. It arrived yesterday. Um, so I'm not sure if you can still get the P500 price. Probably not. Usually that's, by the time it's actually shipped, that's usually over. But you can check it out. Uh, and uh, either order it online from GMT or there's a lot of resellers that you can get a, a decent discount from or buy it from your... Local friendly game store if you're lucky enough to have one that stocks games of this nature. So, all you good folks out there, this is Meandering Mike. Uh, Y'all take care and ciao.